Welcome to the seventh Java video tutorial, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do switch statements. Okay, so let's open up Notepad, and here's a program I made a couple of minutes ago just to show you switch statements. Okay, so everything's inside the main method. Okay, so first we've got a integer variable called score and that holds the value of 4 and this next bits the switch statement we start with the keyword switch and then in parenthesis around it we enter the variable that the test variable the te variable we want to use to switch and in this case it's score so we've entered score into the switch statement parenthesis. Okay, then we've got the curly braces, opening and closing ones, to show what's inside the switch statement. And then we've got the core of the switch statement itself. Okay, so let's see wh what this does. First we've got case, and then five, and then a colon. All of that does is says that if the variable has the value of 5, do this. If it has a value of 4, do this. 3, this. 2, this, etc, etc. And then default is if it can't find the value. Say if I entered score as 6, as you can see there's no case for the number 6. So it will just go to default, which will output this message. You entered an incorrect score. Um, you don't have to define a default case. If you do, it will do that if the number is incorrect, if you haven't specified a case. But if you don't specify a default case, then it just skips it. Like it, it performs no action. It won't, it won't give you an error or anything. It just doesn't perform anything. Okay, so let's look inside one of these. Case 5 first it prints out a congratulatory, congratulatory even message okay and it does the same for each of them depending on your score zero it's speechless because it's so bad <laughs> and then one awful bad good great awesome okay and then you'll notice that in each of these there's a break uh, keyword and all that does is prevents it from going down to the next case so if I didn't have these break statements in at all then if even if you got a score of 5 it would print out all of these messages but because I've got break it stops it there, right there so it doesn't okay so I'll just compile this quickly so you can see what it looks like um. okay and then just run it and I've entered the score of 4 there so it should print out great which it does right there okay so that's got the output we wanted now I'll just show you what would happen if I took out these break statements there was no break none at all okay so I'll just compile that again and then as you can see it does all of them from great because it, it's 4, so it goes to the case 4 and prints out great. It just rolls over to the next one because there's no break statement. All break does is it escapes from the block it's in. So like it stops and then moves on outside the block. You can use a break statement in loops, if statements, anything. It just gets out of the current block. So if I just shove those back in. Okay, so 
that is a switch statement. Um, you can see that they're very, very useful in programming because they they reduce the need for nested if statements, which can become confusing when you're using a lot of them. And also, it just saves you time. It, it it's a lot easier to write this than it is loads of if statements inside each other. Um, you can also use a switch statement with short data types, byte data types, and char data types. So short and byte are pretty much the same as an int, aren't they? Um, uh, as a switch statement goes. The only difference, of course, between short, int, and byte is the amount, the, the numbers they can hold. An int can hold considerably more than a byte can. Okay, um, if I just change this to char and then okay and then I can change these cases to a d c and we'll do f just get rid of those okay now it does exactly the same thing but instead of using the integer data type we're using a a uh, char data type. So if I just quickly compile that and run it, there it says bad. Okay, um, you can't use strings with this switch statement. If you try to use a string, it will give you an error. So just make sure you've used single quotes around these instead of double quotes. Because if you use double quotes, it implies that the thing, the character is a string, which it's not, it's just a character. So just use single quotes. And that is a switch statement. Um, you can use these when you're creating your programs and you need a menu or something, like enter 1 for, I don't know, calendar, enter 2 for calculator, etc, etc. It is so then these and then each of them call different methods. So they're really really good to have and know how to use. Um, as I've said before, the only way to really learn this is to do it yourself. Just create some programs. It doesn't matter if they're really simple, really complicated, or if they have no meaning at all. Just just make sure you're writing code. Otherwise, it won't you just won't learn it. Okay, so that is a switch statement. Um, next time I think I'll cover arrays and maybe a few other data structures. And then a bit more on... I don't, see, I don't know what I'll do after that, but um, uh, when I've finished teaching you these basics, what I'll do is I'll do a big project. I'll give like a, a problem and then a a big project. Well big but you know what I mean. A project that uses all of these skills. And then I'll give you like the question at the start and then you can go away, do it yourself, then watch the rest of the video and I'll walk you through it. Sounds good. Okay, so yeah.